Hi, for this video what we're going to do is perform a hypothesis test and we're going to use a rejection region decision rule. So for this, what we have is we have um, a polling agency reports that over 60% of U.S. adults think the bank bailouts were bad for the U.S. In a random sample of 350 U.S. adults, 214 said the bailouts were bad. At alpha equals 0 0.01, is there enough evidence to support the claim. So what we need to do is we need to look to figure out what kind of information we have to figure out what kind of test we have. Um, since we're dealing with a percentage of the population of US adults, that leads us to believe that we're going to use the one proportion Z test is the name of the test for this one. In order to use the one proportion Z test, you have to check the conditions and depending upon the text that you're using again always refer to your text for the conditions that are required for your text um, they're different for different texts uh, the one that for sure I have seen in all of them is that n times p has to be greater than or equal to 5 and n times q has to be greater than or equal to 5 also. Remember that Q um, is found uh, by doing P minus 1, where P is the percent of the population that we are using. So what we would do is we would go through and find N is 350, and we would take this times 0.6, which ends up giving us 210, which is definitely greater than or equal to 5, okay? And n times q, so we would take um, 350 times 0.4, and we get 140, which is also greater than or equal to 5. So this allows us to approximate the binomial distribution with the normal distribution. Some other ones, like as far as the current textbook that I teach from, the only thing that needs to be done is this one and that it has to be a random sample. From other textbooks, you do have to sample less than 10% of the population. So um, if that's part of your requirements, make sure that you include this. 350 is definitely less than 10% of all U.S. adults. So we're okay to um, use the one proportion Z test. Like I said, for this one, I am going to do hand calculations and we're going to use a rejection region. So if you would prefer to use p-value and technology, then I would go and check out the TI-84 or TI-Inspire videos um, for this particular test. So with this, what we can say is the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis are what we are going to write down after we've concluded what kind of test we're going to run. And then remember that P is what we use for um, our population parameter for this one. Some texts use P naught instead of P, that's acceptable. Um, some use pi instead of P, but we're just going to use P for this one. And we're saying that over 60%, so since it's over 60%, that means that our claim is about the alternative. So we're saying that P is greater than 0 0.60. The opposite of that is that P is less than or equal to 0 0.60. So our important information in order to calculate our standardized test statistic Z is we need to know what our P hat is. And remember that P hat is equal to X divided by N if it's not given to you. So X would be the 214 and n would be the 350 and this ends up being um, I didn't write down the calculations hold on and you can leave it as a fraction to put in this is approximately 0.611429 Okay, um, so instead of rounding like this to put it in, it's better to leave it as p hat 
um, when you're plugging it into your formula. Um, but if it asks for a decimal, that's how you would find it. We need to know our sample size, which remember was 350. P comes from here, and our Q, remember, is 1 minus P. And some texts just leave it as 1 minus P is what they put into the formula. Um, so we would do 1 minus 0 0.6, which is 0.4. And we need to know our alpha level. So our alpha level is 0 0.01. So what we are going to do is we are going to draw out our picture. For this one, we do have a right tail test. And like I said, we're using a rejection region. So in a rejection region, what we have to do is we have to find the critical value. So this is our rejection region. And I shaded a bit too much. Hold on. Let me take out some of that shading. Um, so the rejection region for this one is our alpha level. Since our alpha level is um, 0 0.01, we would only shade a little bit of this. So our rejection region is where we make our decision whether or not we are going to reject or fail to reject. To get the critical value for this one, um, since this is a Z test, we would be looking for Z naught. Um, I am going to use a T table because over time the T table becomes, or the T distribution just becomes the normal model. And since we have a one tail test, it's a right tail, I would look until I find 0 0.01 here. And then I would go to the very bottom. The very bottom, notice that it says that it's the Z-score. On some of them it says infinity, um, but eventually it will become the Z. And so the 2.326 is our value that we are going to use to make our determination. So if it asks you for the critical value, this is a critical value. The critical value determines the rejection region. So now what we need to do is we need to calculate our standardized test statistic for our particular sample. So what I would do is p hat minus p divided by the square root of p times q divided by n, so we would just fill in all of these values. Like I said, I'm going to keep the p hat as 214 over 350 just because it's more accurate. You can round, but just be careful because every time you round within a problem, it causes a little bit more error, so I just leave it as a fraction. The 0.6 is our p value, and then we would divide it by 0 0.6 times 0.4 divided by our sample size, which is 350. And if we plug this into our calculator, we get 0.4364, which is not very uncommon. That's, a very, that's very, very likely to occur. So this is definitely not in our rejection region because 0.436 would be somewhere like right here. Um, so the way that you use the rejection region is if your value that you just calculated, so this value right here, if it falls in this rejection re region, the shaded region, then you reject. If it doesn't, like ours does not, um, we would fail to reject. Since our Z of 0.4364 is not in the rejection region. Right. And remember, our conclusion is always about the null hypothesis, so we're going to fail to reject H sub 0. So now if we go back to our claim, remember that our claim was about the alternative hypothesis. We don't have enough information to reject this, so that means that we do not have enough evidence to support the claim. So at alpha, even if I used alpha equals... 0 0.05, there's no way that this would be rejected. So um, we do not have enough evidence to support the claim that over 60% feel the bailouts were bad. And 
And I know sometimes when you run through this process, you forget um, what was your question really about. So you can always go back up and reference the question, reread it before you write your answer. When you're interpreting your decision, you always want to make sure that you have your significance level. So whether you have alpha or whether you have the percentage, um, and you always want to make sure that it's in context of the original problem um, so that anybody reading it can understand what conclusion you made. As always, thanks for watching.